And joining us right now is former Senator Jim DeMint of South Carolina, now president of the Heritage Foundation. And we want to talk about this Export-Import Bank. I know much has been said about Ted Cruz, a senator from Texas, accusing Mitch McConnell of lying. That has to do with the procedures involved to get this through. But listen to Ted Cruz quickly here talking about the Import-Export Bank itself. If you go to the American people and ask, is reauthorizing the XM Bank a priority for you? The standard response for most of them will be the what? They don't even know what this is. Let me tell you what it is. It is an egregious example of corporate welfare. All right, Senator DeMint, take it from there. Uh, Explain how this is an egregious example of corporate welfare. Well, unfortunately, the reason the government keeps growing, the debt keeps growing, is that it's almost impossible to eliminate any government program, no matter how bad or wasteful it is. And that's because their interest for all of these programs in every state and the the article I wrote this week, uh, which I think our folks talked about, was pointing out that there needs to be leadership in Congress to get rid of these things that have parochial interests like the Export-Import Bank. This is just one uh, kind of just one piece of this huge crony uh, crony system here in Washington, where the government is playing favorites with the big interests, and the big interests are trying to keep you know their their fingers in the pie here, and it's the taxpayer. Uh, that's getting hit with this, not just with this one program, but this one program is one that actually could be eliminated by Congress, by leadership, because they don't have to do anything to pass it. They just have to not bring it up. But uh, this is uh, an old relic of the Great Depression uh, that lends money to foreign companies and countries to buy U.S. products. And it's just become uh, a big crony tool that uh, benefits big companies in this country, less than 2% of our trade. Uh, so most businesses don't benefit from it, but a few big ones do, and they're here in Washington lobbying to keep this old crony bank open. And is that why it's so difficult to kill this snake? It is, because, uh, I mean, Boeing, gosh, Boeing has a big plan in South Carolina, makes it real hard for the congressmen and senators there to, to vote against it, but they need to, and, and that's how leadership needs to help. We couldn't get earmarks eliminated a few years ago because there were so many interests back home for uh, congressmen and senators to take home the bacon. But behind closed doors, the leadership worked it where they were able to get rid of it, and, and Boehner played a role in that, and I would sure like to see him step up and keep this Export-Import Bank off the floor of the House um, but at, after what happened in the Senate. But the guy who's been who's been uh, leading the clarion call in the in the Senate has been Ted Cruz, and uh, he got himself into sort of a, a bad place with leadership by claiming that Mitch McConnell lied. Would you like to wade into those waters from your perspective? Did Mitch McConnell tell a story? Well, you know, we we were very um, um, uh, uncomfortable back when the trade deal they they called it Trade Promotion Authority was passed passed because everyone uh, saw the huddle on the floor when they couldn't get the votes for the TPA, and then the senators came away saying Mitch McConnell had promised them uh, a vote on export-import if they voted for TPA. So there there seemed to be a pretty clear swap there, and so I I think um, from what I understand, and I wasn't there, uh, but I believe uh, Senator McConnell told his conference that he had not made that promise. But then a week or so ago, uh, he said he had to put it up because he did promise it. So I don't know what the real story is. I thought Ted Cruz gave a very thoughtful, civil, and um, accurate description of what happened from what I understand. But what we we need here is we don't need a six-year reauthorization of a transportation bill in the first place because the next president needs to reform this broken transportation system. And we don't need to be attaching things like a crony bank to it so that it'll get passed while we don't even give members of the Senate a chance to bring up amendments to defund Planned Parenthood or to recognize Israel. I just think the thing came off the rails, and from the outside, it looks terrible. Let me ask you for a second, because you talk about Boeing. Boeing is a company that has nearly $100 billion in assets, 
And and if I'm correct, what Mitch McConnell and uh, the President Obama, the Democrats and a core Republican group in the Senate is asking the American taxpayer to do is is to create an entity or, or reestablish an entity, the Export Import Bank, that gives subsidies to that company. How is this not a political winner for Republicans to make Democrats the uh, the party of big government subsidizing a multi billion dollar entity? Wow. Well, why on earth are we jumping on board with this plan, Jim DeMint? I don't understand it either because the Democrats have been saying the Republicans were in pocket of big business for years, uh, and it's more true on their side than yes. the Republican. But uh, this is just such an obvious thing that would show Americans that we're not up here playing favorites, that the Congress is not picking winners and losers and using their taxpayer money to pay off big political cronies. I mean, it's just one blow against cronyism. It's not the biggest thing of things like Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, just like earmarks weren't that big. But it began a process of showing uh, Americans that their government is here to create opportunity for everyone yeah. and favoritism for no one. It's such an opportunity for both parties to, to begin to shake away that this all of this cronyism that has created the mistrust around the country. Well, and most importantly, an opportunity for the Republicans to actually tell the voters who put them in power in 2014, who they promised would they would make a difference if they got into power, to actually make that difference. But I'm preaching to the choir here, Mr. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it seems uh, like an obvious, uh, if, uh, an obvious opportunity for those in Congress who, who want to shed that image of just playing for the big guys. And all the politicians say they're for the little guys, but Washington is only for the big guys. And that's really what we're here to fight at Heritage and I think dozens and dozens of other groups that here. It's not so much political partisanship. It's just big government is for big unions, big corporations, and we need to start taking that apart. And we're looking for some allies um, in the House right now it looks like there's some folks over there who, who want to do the right thing, so we'll, we'll see. All right, so uh, I'll give you the opportunity, because I know you're dying to jump into it. Uh, t your assessment of the 2016 uh, field of candidates that Republicans are putting up, uh, you know, you're from South Carolina, that's a key state. <laughs> yeah. What's your, what, who do you like out there? Well, it, it's really a lot of fun. I know people say, uh, oh, well, all these people, it's confusing, but... That'll work its way out. I think the debate that's coming up between all these people is, is, for the most part, it's good. And when there are a lot of them, it's a little harder for them to make it totally negative, although we see some well, of Well, I mean, you know, one of the people running is a former colleague of yours, uh, now the senior senator from South Carolina. Uh, do you have uh, any thoughts about the Lindsey Graham candidacy? Here's your chance to endorse. Well, <laughs> well, the, well, they all have something to bring to this. And, and Lindsey is oh, Lindsay's, don't do this to a senator to yeah. Come on! You, you really expect me to do endorse someone with seventeen people, yeah. like, good friends? But I think if if Americans listen to the conservatives in the race, they'll see that there is a an agenda that'll make life better for Americans and turn this country around. And we really need that in sixteen. And so. We're going to be out there talking about the ideas, not the candidates, and hopefully Americans will see that there's a way to have opportunity for everyone and get right. rid of all this favorite. I'll let you off the hook after that. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Senator Jim DeMint, now the president of the Heritage Foundation. Appreciate you joining us here this morning. Thank you both.